Hello, this is Nenny from Nenny's Napkins here to show you four ways uh, that you can use Stamperia or Stamperia's Extra Light Soft Clay. Uh, this comes in white. I've previously opened this package, so I keep it in a, stored in a Ziploc bag. Uh, Nenny's VIP members receive a monthly subscription box, and this month it included some of the soft clay. Uh, some molds. I think everybody got one or two of these deeper molds. Uh, every, yeah, two, I believe. Everybody got two uh, of these shallow A5 texture molds. I don't think everybody's uh, box was exactly the same. <coughs> uh, and there was a number of other items. A, a spatula, not this one exactly, but a metal spatula. And a little bottle of Mod Podge and some napkins and some rice papers. Um, I think they were background texture ones for uh, for mainly for doing mixed media but uh, I'm going to show you how to use this clay in your decoupage and your mixed media. Um, this will help you know elevate your decoupage to new levels if you choose to use clay. We like Stamperia's Extra Light Soft Clay because it's very pliable, it's very easy to work with. Uh, it's extremely light once it's dry. Uh, it probably isn't the most durable once it's dry, so it's, you know, it's not something that, uh, you know, if it's going to get touched a whole ton after it's dry or weight put on it or it's going to get bashed around, you might not want to use that for this. Uh, but for most decoupage projects that are going to, you know, sit on a shelf or most mixed media, it's going to hang on a wall. This is perfect for that. So you just want to knead the clay a little bit here. I've got a uh, parchment paper down on the table so that the clay won't stick. Oh, and this uh, little canvas, 5x7 canvas, was also included in uh, the subscription boxes this month. Uh, these molds, though, and the clay can all be purchased from ninniesnapkins.com. So the first that way that you can use it is probably the most obvious. You have a uh, deep mold like this one. I'll put the link uh, in the description box to all the products used. Uh, and so you just want to maybe roll, roll this out a little bit. And then you're going to want to push it into your mold. Oh, actually, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to... Try putting a little bit of cornstarch. I don't find I have too much sticking in the the deep molds, uh, but sometimes on the texture molds I do have a little bit of trouble getting it out. So that should help anyway. And you're just gonna smush it in there. This is an air dry clay, so it doesn't require baking in an oven. Uh, but it does mean that you don't want to leave it, uh, leave your clay package open for too long, or it will start to dry on you. Just try and seal it in a Ziploc. And then once we've got the mold filled, we're just going to take our metal spatula. And slice the back to give us a nice smooth surface. I think a bigger spatula would have been better. I think the one in the subscription box is just significantly bigger than the one I have. There, and uh, you don't have to wait for the clay to dry inside of the mold. You pop it right out, and you can glue it onto your decoupage project or your mixed media project right away. You can paint it right away, but it's probably best to let it dry. There, look how good. How good that looks. Now the benefit of not letting it dry in the mold is if I wanted to make multiple flowers for my canvas, I could. I think I'll make one more. Maybe I want a bigger one. I think I need a little more clay. I think that uh, most of you will know that you can use clay in this way. So maybe this is no surprise to you, but I'm hoping that some of the other ways I'm going to show to you today might be uh, 
Let me give you an aha moment. I didn't invent any of these methods. I've seen them in various videos. But I know when I first saw it, I definitely had my aha moment. And I thought, that's really cool way of using clay. And I find this Stamperia soft clay really lends itself to these methods. Okay, not perfectly smooth on the back. There you go, that one's not as nice, but I'm rushing a little bit here. I tend to forget that you can speed the videos up and I think, oh, I gotta go fast, I gotta go fast. <laughs> there you go. Come on, camera, focus. Oh, sorry, doesn't want to focus. Okay, I'm not going to glue those down yet. I'm going to move on to the next uh, technique, the next thing you can do with this clay. And again, this will be good for your mixed media, uh, for your backgrounds, or you can even find ways to incorporate it into your decoupage, I'm sure. So now we're going to need one of these texture molds. This one is called Journal. Again, I'll put the link in the description box. We do have a few of these left available for sale. So I'm going to get a little bit more clay. Now this I think is really, really cool. Just going to dust this again. Probably using way too much. I'm sure you can use other, uh, I had brought cornstarch from home because that's what I had, but uh, I'm sure you can use other things. I think what I'm going to do first is flatten it out a little bit first on my parchment. And then I'm just going to press it into this mold. a lot more easily than last times that I did it without the cornstarch. So now that's got a really cool really cool texture to it. You can see the words there. And so now what you can do with this this is my mixed media canvas and I'm going to glue it right on there. Uh, you can use Mod Podge for this. I don't have any, so I'm going to use some TCW Matte Gel Medium and one of my nice Stamperia flat brushes, size 1. I'm just going to generously paint some on here. You can use other types of glue as well or other gel mediums as well for this. Because it's matte, I don't have to worry about it getting in places where uh, the clay is not going to end up. I'm just going to let it overhang a little bit there because I can easily cut that off with my spatula. And then just to blend it kind of in more to the background, I'm going to really smush it down here with my spatula. Don't have to do this, I just I help, find it helps it to stick and it uh, kind of makes it more part of the background. And of course later I'm going to paint over this. Now that's mixed with a bit of gel medium so I don't know if you want to try and keep that. And then I'm just going to go along and cut kind of on an angle here. There, right along the canvas. There. How cool is that? That'll give you quite the uh, textured background. I got 
two cameras on the go here, so uh, of course they're filming at two slightly different angles. Now that I've got my gel medium out, I think I'm going to glue these on here as well. I think I might add a couple more later, but actually I kind of like them going right off the page. I'm not going to cut these ones off. There, I might do some more later off camera. <clears throat> okay, so that was uh, one and two things that you can do with the Stamperia soft, extra light soft clay. Okay, so I've set my canvas aside to dry. I need to get myself another piece of parchment. I'm going to show you the number three cool thing. This isn't really decoupage or mixed media. This is kind of. Well, you'll see in a minute, I guess. I'm going to stick a ball of clay between two pieces of parchment. If you have a rolling pin, that would be great. All I've got is my little tiny brayer. I still can't find my big brayer since we moved to the new location. But you'll get the idea. I'm just going to roll this out. I've got way too much clay here. <coughs> roll this out until it's about a quarter inch thick. Probably good right there. Put the parchment aside. And I've got a different, uh, different texture mold, soft texture mold. I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I wish I had a makeup brush, but yet another thing I haven't been able to find. If you don't know, we moved our uh, warehouse at the beginning of the year uh, from Baxter, Ontario to Everett, Ontario. And <clears throat> quite a bit of stuff is still in boxes. So I'm just going to place the mold on there and I'm gonna roll it out a little bit again. And you can use this mold both ways. You can do it this way or flip it over and you actually get a different look. Which is really cool. Makes these molds really versatile. Beautiful. I love that mold. <clears throat> okay, now I want some kind of a round lid. Various sizes will do. And we're just gonna I'm gonna dust this a little bit with the cornstarch as well. There, that's pretty good. I'm gonna press into it. And cut out a nice circle and kind of squeeze the lid a little bit. There, so now we have a nice round textured shape. Now you can glue that onto a canvas for a mixed media background. Or we're just going to reuse this bit, re roll it out. If I had a smaller circle, I could have cut another one. Or you can. I don't have a little bowl, but if you have a nice little shallow bowl, you can set it in the bowl and let it rest in it, or you flip the bowl over and you set it on top and, and then let it dry like that, and it'll dry into a little bowl shape, and you can make um, you know, a little dish to put your rings in on your nightstand. The other thing we can do is I'm going to take one of my <coughs> uh, finer paint brushes. I'm just going to poke a hole through it, open that hole up a little bit there, 
There, and then just leave it to dry like that, and then later we can tie a string through it and make an ornament out of it. And because the back is flat, you can decoupage the back and have texture on the other side. So that's the third cool thing you can do with the Stamperia Extra Light Soft Clay. So I'm going to set this aside to dry, and then I'm going to get ready to show you number four cool thing. So I will be back. Okay, and I am back. I apologize, there's a bit of a glare here. Uh, but hopefully, so you can see, I've put an owl napkin underneath this sheet of paper. And I'm going to put some plastic over top. And what I want to do, I'm going to decoupage this owl onto something. I'll show you after. Um, but I want him to be 3D, to be raised up. So I'm actually going to build the owl shape using the clay and then we're going to glue it down to our object and then we're going to decoupage over top of it. I've only done this once before, um, so it may not be perfect and I'm certainly not a sculptor. I'm going to try putting down a little bit of cornstarch again. Okay, now here's my ball of clay. So now I'm just going to try and form the owl shape and actually maybe the best way to do this is going to be to smush them all out. And I think you really, what I learned from the last time is you want it to be a little bit smaller because the napkin, the owl shape has to come down the sides. Uh, so you, you want your shape that you're building to be a little smaller than your owl. Where's my brayer? I'm just going to roll this out a little bit. There. So, now what I'm going to do is kind of... I chose a really simple image for this this time. I'm sure with practice you could get more and more complex. Uh, I wish I could remember where I saw the first video doing this, but the person who did it um, did a, uh, a mushroom on the side of a box and it lo just looked phenomenal. She did a wonderful job and she obviously had a lot of experience using clay and in decoupage. So I'm just going to kind of shape this until I can just see the edges of the owl. I don't know if you can see there. I can see a bit of the owl. This is sliding around a lot, but that's all right. And you certainly don't have to worry about this being perfect. Uh, it's just a general shape. I've got some high spots here, so I'm going to try and even it out a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. I want it to be a bit smaller. So the last one I did as practice, I did a butterfly and I kind of built each wing and put it down it was a little bit more complex and for the most part I liked it but that's as I said where I learned that uh, I think you need your clay to be a bit smaller than the image because the bat butterfly wasn't wrapping down over the edges of the clay but, I mean that's how you how you improve how you get better is just by practicing rarely do we make a masterpiece the first time we try something. And if you do, if you are one of those people, well, lucky you. <laughs> Some people just seem to be good at everything. Yeah, that's kind of looking like an owl. I'm pretty happy with that. He's not totally smooth. He's not totally even. But I think in general you get the idea. 
So now I'm going to put this excess clay away. Get my little brayer out of here. When I've seen other people do this, they've cut the napkin shape out and then traced it onto a piece of paper and then built it on the paper. Uh, I kind of thought that this would work better. But that's just me. Maybe if you're better, better at drawing than I am, maybe tracing it is a better way to go for you. Okay, we haven't damaged our napkin in any way. I'm going to set that aside for a second. And I'm going to get my object. This is just a wooden wooden thing. I think it was used as like a display stand for something. Or somebody gave it to me. I found it in my stash. I thought it would be good for, uh, for this demonstration. I've painted it white uh, using Country Chic all-in-one decor paints. And now, I'm just going to try and, because this owl's not centered on here, try and get an idea of where he's going to go. I'm not going to have the decoupage come down the sides. Maybe. Hmm. So, oh, there, my clay came right off of my plastic. So he's a, just a little off-center. Now, if I was going to make this to sell or to give as a gift, I, I would take a lot more time making sure everything was really perfect, but for this video, I... Isn't that a nice napkin? I never noticed before that the branch comes across both, and you get, uh, this is called Furged. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, but you get uh, two different size owls. You get the big one and the smaller one. I've always loved this napkin. I'm a big fan of owls. I know they're not everybody's thing, but they are quite popular. So again, I'm going to get out my matte gel medium and one of my Stamperia flat brushes. And I'm just going to have a nice coat of this. It'd be pretty generous because this is a bigger piece, but as I said, it does. Uh, it's very light when it dries. There, just a little off center, and that should be good. Now I am going to wait a little while for the gel medium to dry before I decoupage my napkin on, but I'm not going to wait for the clay to dry. This clay usually takes about 24 hours to fully dry, sometimes a little longer, depending on your humidity and temperature. Um, but I, I don't think you have to wait for it to dry to really, to start decoupaging over it. I don't even often wait for it to dry before I paint. So uh, I'll let that gel medium dry and I will be back shortly. Okay, so while that gel medium dried, I cut out my uh, owl napkin, just the one quarter that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to separate the plies. There's one. And there's going to be a second one here. There we go. It's a lot easier to do, I find, after it's been cut and you don't have to uh, deal with the embossing on the edges. But. Okay, and I'm just going to cut off this excess on the tail. There. Okay. Now I'm ready for my decoupage. So I am going to get out my Polyvine Decorator's Varnish in a dead flat finish. The blue stripe here means dead flat. Red would be satin. Yellow would be gloss. 
I want a dead flat because I don't want to see it. If I choose later that I decide the whole thing needs to be glossier, then I can go over it with another coat. But uh, You've probably seen me do this before. We're going to use this as our decoupage glue. Now, oftentimes I like to do the water method of decoupage. If you haven't seen me do that, look back in our videos for the coaster video where I teach you how to do the water method. Uh, it's not going to really work very well for this project, so we're just going to go the old-fashioned way. I'm going to start just on the clay owl. And I'm going to try and line this guy up as best I can, which is not easy, I'll be honest. <laughs> I think I'd be better off. I'm gonna try and oh, I ripped them a little bit, but that's okay. Actually, I think I got them on there pretty well now. He's getting a little wet as I'm laying him down. And he's get becoming fragile, but he'll stick back together. There. Now I'm just going right over the top with the same decorator's varnish. Uh, just being very gentle, using my Stamperia uh, flat brush because it's very, very soft. And I'm using quite a bit of varnish because that gives less friction. Oh, I didn't get him on there <laughs> very evenly. I think actually I'm going to try that again. So what I always tell people in my workshops, if you mess up, it's just a napkin. Pull it off, start over. No big deal. I'm just going to cut this one in half again. I think this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up his head first because that's the most important. Okay, separate my layers. Like that, put two at once. Okay. Maybe I should put a bit more Varnish down. A little easier if I wasn't filming because I could get uh, a little closer to my project. But there, I think that's much better this time. Okay. Yes, I like that much better. Now we're just going to work from the owl outwards. And as I said, I'm not going to allow the napkin down the edges because mostly it's just not big enough. Um, so what I'll do later is I'll end up sanding off. Uh, the excess napkin so for now I'm just taking the varnish to the edge trying not to get it down the sides after I sand it later I may end up having to touch up the white paint again but that's not a big deal and I think this is really cool I'm really happy with how this is turning out actually I think this is one of those really uh, underappreciated napkins. We've had this napkin a long time. We have restocked it a couple of times, but oftentimes the older napkins start to get overlooked, even though they're still awesome. 
There, okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and sand the edges. I'll see you in a little while. Hello, hello. A couple hours have passed and I am back. My decoupage is uh, basically dry. You can tell the clay's still a bit wet, but now I just wanna, I'm gonna take my sanding block and really gently go over this. Um, I can already see a little bit of the paints coming off, but uh, if I want to repair that, I can easily paint over it, but I might actually like the distressed look on this piece, so we'll see. And just There's a bit of a sharp edge here, so I'm just dragging my sanding block across that ever so gently, and that is cutting off the excess napkin. I think I got a little bit of varnish here, so the napkin's sticking a little bit. Oh, get that off of there. Actually, that came off pretty nicely. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out, <laughs> especially for my second attempt at uh, using the clay under the napkin. The owl's not sitting on there entirely straight, but that's okay. Handmade isn't supposed to be perfect, is it? It's a bit tricky to sand here because of the clay. Now you've seen four ways that you can use the uh, Stamperia Soft Extra Light Clay. I'm sure there are many, many, many more ways you can use it. Uh, you can always share them with us on our uh, Facebook page called Arts and Crafts with Ninny's Napkins. Or sorry, our Facebook group. Or send us an email with some photos or a link to a video. We always like to learn new things too and then we can pass them on to you. So I'm kind of looking the, liking this distress look so I'm going to just distress a little bit more here. with that. Just going to brush off some of the dust from sanding. And then I'll be giving this whole thing a couple more coats of the Polyvine Decorators varnish. I actually just created a, uh, a bundle of the Polyvine varnishes now so you can try them out at a bit of a discount. Uh, the first bundle I created contains four different bottles, the decorator's varnish, the wax finish varnish, the heavy duty extreme, and the heavy duty wood, all in a 100 mil size and all in a dead flat finish, which is what I'm using today. Uh, and you also get a one inch polyvine varnish brush in the bundle. Um, so I will link that in the description box below as well. And then uh, we're just waiting on our polyvine shipment to arrive from the UK. Should be here this week. And at that time we'll have the uh, wood varnish and the extreme varnish back in the satin. And then I'll make a satin bundle as well. Uh, let me know if you think I should make bundles for the larger sizes. Um, for the 500 and all. Oh, the heavy duty extreme doesn't come in a 500. So we'll just have to do a one liter 
And we have some new, a new Polyvine product coming as well, so stay tuned for that. Something that we previously didn't offer. I'm just going to add another coat. I don't have any of my nice brushes here, but this will do for that. Just gonna add another coat just to protect this and try and seal that napkin down a bit there. There. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with this. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. I suppose I could put some hardware on the back of it, hanger, and hang it on a wall, or it'll just be a shelf sitter. If you liked this video, uh, please let us know by clicking the thumbs up. Uh, if you could subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. And uh, a comment is really great as well. And I asked in the last video, uh, what else, what other tutorials um, would you like to see? What other products would you like to learn to use that we carry? What techniques? Let us know. We want to hear from you. There. So you can kind of see how he's 3D sticks out. I think that's pretty cool. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope I've given you some inspiration and ideas, especially for those uh, who receive their monthly subscription box. Uh, hopefully you uh, get a lot of use out of your molds and your clay. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.